The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Paul writes to the Romans, but now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law of the law and the prophets bear witness to it. We, I think, often have this image of Luther being, being a monk, being a priest, he's, he's an ordained priest, kind of sitting at his uh, university room at night up reading the Bible, and he, and he reads this passage of Romans, and he goes, oh my goodness, how can we have missed this for 1,500 years? And he, and he runs to his friends excitingly, and then, and then the next day he starts preaching the gospel, and then the Roman Catholic Church gets really mad, and that, that's not what happened. The, the church hadn't forgotten about the book of Romans for 1,500 years or 800 years or how many, many hundreds of years you want to say. They read these words. They knew these words. What had changed was the idea of righteousness and their understanding of righteousness. They would read that word and they would read it that God was angry at you. See, you were such a poor, miserable sinner that God had to come and save you. Jesus had to die for you because you were wretched. And not only that, he, he forgives you in your baptism, but what happens? You go out and you just you commit more sin. So God was angry with you because why can't you just get your act together to begin with? And so the righteousness of God was used to beat the people over their head with it. God was a wrathful God. God was an angry God. And the only way to earn his love, to earn his forgiveness, was to confess your sins and to pay penance. And everything that you forgot to confess or you didn't do enough penance for, you didn't do the penance right, would be purged from you by fire and purgatory. Which the only thing that made purgatory better than hell was you got out of purgatory. But that was it. What changed when Luther was reading Scripture is he realized the original definition to righteousness, that God is righteous, and through his righteousness we are saved. He willfully and lovingly goes to the cross for us. And this is not as an angry, mean God, but as a loving, self-sacrificial God. And that you can't earn God's love, you can't earn his righteousness, but he freely gives us. It's a gift. Y'all have birthdays, right? Okay. <laughs> I was worried. You all have birthdays. You get birthday presents? Yes. yes. Okay. What work did you do on your birthday? None. Your mom did all the work, right? Your dad might not have even been in the room, depending on, on when you were born. He might have been out in the lobby waiting to light up a cigar whenever the nurse came out and told him whether it was a boy or a girl. You get birthday gifts for doing nothing. Everybody else did all the work. You get the gift of forgiveness for doing nothing. Christ does the work. Christ did the work. This is what we, we celebrate. This is what we come back to on Reformation Day. That this gospel truth is what the church stands or falls upon. Justification by faith alone. Through grace alone. If we lose that, then we have to earn our forgiveness. If we lose that, then God becomes angry and wrathful. And we get on this treadmill of having to earn his love. But you're never good enough. Because what happens? You sin. And you have to start all over again. Every time you sin, you have to make it up to God. And I mean, that makes logical sense. When you hurt somebody, 
you have to make them whole, right? Our, our civil framework, our civil law framework is based upon this. You build, your neighbor, you build your fence on your neighbor's property to make them whole. You have to take down your fence and put it on your property. Our criminal law is even based upon this. If you steal something, you make society whole by paying back and going to jail. So what do we tell our kids when they're fighting? When one wrongs another, make it right. Make it right with one another. And so it makes sense that if I sin against God, I got to make it right with God. But that denies the free gift. That denies the forgiveness of sins. That denies Christ on the cross. God made it right with us. Why? Because, as I said at the beginning, we're poor, miserable sinners. To our hearts, and we can live in the forgiveness of God. Peace and the comfort of the forgiveness of sins. So great that it can separate in this earth that can separate you from the love of God. That death itself has been defeated and cannot separate you from the love of Christ Jesus. And that God is not the God of the dead, but He is the God of the living. And we hold fast to the promise of the resurrection. Everything in this world is about what you do. In fact, we identify ourselves by what we do. What's your job? What is it you do? Hi, my name's so-and-so. This is what I do. Right? And then you get a certain age and you get to say, well, I'm retired. Right? And so you're defined by your lack of not having to do a job. Christianity is the opposite of that. We're defined by what Christ has done for us. We're defined by the gospel, the good news, the preaching of the forgiveness of sins. We have neighbors and we have loved ones who need to hear that. We have neighbors and we have loved ones who are trying to justify themselves in the sight of God and in the sight of man. They're trying to be good enough. They're, in fact, they'll tell you this, I'm a good person. I'm a good person. Well, at what moment would you stop being a good person? Well, if I did something really, really bad. And I have a list of those things that I don't do them. And by not doing them, I'm good. In everybody's eyes, including my own. The problem is, is that's not good in the sight of God. Only perfect is good in the sight of God. But perfect is done in Jesus Christ. Upon the cross, pouring out his blood for us, covering us in that blood. It's easy to toot our own horn on Reformation Sunday. We're Lutherans. We're the original. Right? Everybody else got it wrong after us. And you know, a lot of people are wrong before us as well. But what's that really saying? We're good enough. We got it right. They got it wrong. And so even in our pride, even in our celebration, there's hubris there about doing a good work. But we are not justified by good works. We are not justified by the law. We are justified by Christ alone. We started the service with confession because of that. We end this service with the blessing of God, the Arianic blessing, the threefold blessing. And in between, what are we doing? We're praising God that He forgives us freely because of His love for us shown through Jesus Christ. Amen indeed. Let's preach that message now and always. Not because we're better than everybody else. Because we're just like everybody else. And we need to be reminded of it as well. In Christ's name, amen.